In 2022, we celebrate 130 years of HBCU football. On December 27, 1892, Livingstone and Biddle College, now known as Johnson C. Smith University, played in Salisbury, North Carolina, with Biddle winning 5-0. Over time, HBCU football has evolved. HBCU football's popularity continues to rise. Millions attend games each year and millions more watch on television. The HBCU bands provide some of the top entertainment in the country. Over that time, some of the best players to ever play in the National Football League played at HBCUs. Every Monday through Friday on the HBCU Football Daily Podcast, national radio and television host Donald Ware takes a look at what's happening in HBCU football and talks with coaches, players, administrators, and media about the 2022 season. Make sure you join the conversation on social media by using the hashtag HBCU130. Now, here's your host, Donald Ware. You've got it locked to the HBCU Football Daily Podcast for today, Friday, July the 29th. I'm Donald Ware. It's Friday! So I tell you what, it's the end of the week. It's our first week of the HBCU Football Daily Podcast, and we're going to end the week on a fantastic note for those that are watching, and uh, you can see him right there. And for those uh, that are listening, we have, in his fifth season, as the head football coach at Alabama A&M is Connell Maynor, who joins us on the HBCU Football Daily Podcast. What's going on, Coach Maynor? Nothing much, man. Uh, get ready, man. It's time. It's football season. Everybody's been waiting for it. We're excited. Everybody's excited. And uh, it's time to get out there on practice and get these guys ready. No doubt. As are you, are, Do you – is it – I mean, do you find it a little bit of a – obviously, it's a, it's a bit of a getaway. But how refreshing is it to kind of get away, if you will, come back east, visit some family before the start of the football season? Well, it's always great. You know, family is, is – you know, I, I always tell everybody, I put God first, family second job third so um you know I, i'm seeing my dad and i'm about to go see my mom and then head back up because it's going to be a grind for the next three or four months so um you know just always anytime you make time for your family uh you got you got to try to do it i'm going to ask you the obvious question but i'm not going to ask it first because i'm sure everybody has asked the obvious question first i want to talk about you know a couple of guys returning for you most notably Gary Quarles. I, I, I remember, I mean, he played well last year. In the spring, you really, really saw him break out spring, going back spring 2021, that is, during during the season. You know, talk about what he's going to mean to this offense this year. Uh, everything. You know, he's a uh, he's a three down back. You know, he can play on first and second down. He can run in between the tackles. He can run outside. He can make you miss. He can run you over. Um, and then on third down, uh, you can throw him the ball out the backfield. Uh, you can run screens with him, or he can stay in there and block. Uh, he's one. He's probably our best blocking uh, running back we got, and one of the best blockers on the football team. Um, he's not afraid to put his nose in there against a linebacker or a defense end. Uh, so Gary means everything to us, and he never comes off the field. You know, he's a, he's just a workhorse man, and probably played a more, little more than I wanted to uh, last couple of years. Uh, I like to try to. Uh, get those running backs a little break. And so hopefully uh, we signed a couple of running backs and hopefully these guys uh, can give Gary a break and maybe get him 25 and get them 10 to 15 carries. And uh, so he can be healthy for the end of the season. And then Ibrahim, your wide receiver, all American wide receivers, been a, just a phenomenal play. One of the, one of the best players, not only in the SWAC, but all of college football is so just a phenomenal wide receiver, phenomenal player for you. He is. He is. And uh, I'm, I'm glad he's on our team. Of course, everybody know his story. He's a walk on now. He's a three time All-American uh, with the COVID year. He still has two years left. So um, we're looking for continued great things out of him and his leadership on and off the football field. And uh, I'm pretty sure he's going to continue to make plays. Now I'm going to ask you the obvious question. I mean, you, you know, it's, it's just a natural life of progression. You know, you have kids. They move on. There's no doubt Aquil Glass, his eligibility is up. He's one of the best quarterbacks um, in the nation on last year. You can't replace him. I'm not going to ask you how do you replace him, but how do you move forward after having a guy, and, and any, if anybody knows this, is you, after having a guy like an Aquil Glass? Well, you know, uh, what I've told everybody is true. 
Um, you know, whoever plays quarterback for us this year is not going to be a quill glass. It, you can't replace him with uh, what he's done. He's, he was four years into the program and uh, just continued to get better and better every year. The way he was a coach on the field, knew all the checks, where everybody had to be. And I always tell the quarterbacks, your job is to make everybody else better. And that's what a quill did. He made the O-line better, changing up the cadence um, uh, and uh, changing the protections made the receivers better, giving them the ball on time, get them yak yards, put them in the right position, move them in a little bit, move them out a little bit, uh, check him when he's supposed to. Uh, and so I made Gary better because, you know, they have to focus on him and then you can sneak Gary in there. So that's what that's what the quarterback job is, make everybody better. Uh, but, you know, we got Quincy Casey and uh, Xavier Langford uh, probably battle for the starting job. And, the, you know, the good thing about that is Donald, I think both of those guys are capable. So I'm not going to be disappointed at who starts and who backs up. And I won't be afraid to pull the guy uh, that isn't performing if he is the starter, because I think the backup is just, I think they both, I think it's going to be a great battle. And like I said, I think both of them will lead us to where we need to be. And so I wouldn't hesitate if one of them wasn't playing well to, to make a change. Tell us a little bit about each of their backgrounds and what each brings to the table. Well, of course, you know, Quincy came from uh, Jackson State. Uh, we He played against us in the spring, and um, he played very well in that game. And uh, and then, of course, uh, Mr. S uh, 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 Ashur uh, Sanders is uh, uh, came in town, and so Quincy decided to move on And uh, since he played so well against us. And uh, he's a dual-threat guy. Uh, we thought he'd fit our program, and uh, – so he's here and he'd be battling for the job. And then Xavier uh, is like I do. Xavier's a walk on, you know. Uh, and what, well, see, I, I don't know. You know, you hear a lot about walk ons with me and my program because I play the best guy. You know, I don't care if you're a transfer, a senior, a walk on, half scholarship, full scholarship. I'm going to play the best guy. And so uh, when I have camps, I have trials, I, I'm looking for that diamond in the rough. I'm looking for that next guy to help me win football games. You know, some people do it for the money. Some people do it just to do it because everybody else is doing it. I do to try to find players. Connell Maynard, in his fifth season as the head football coach at Alabama a and he joins us here on the HBCU Football Daily Podcast. How would you characterize Coach Maynard last season uh, coming off the spring HBCU National Championship season? How would I characterize last season? Yes. Well, I thought that uh, it was a success because we had a winning season. We were seven and three. We won home. Uh, we won the classic, and uh, we had a winning season. But uh, that was for the fans, you know. They, you know, for them that was a good season. But for us as coaches, our expectations of winning the swag and get to the celebration bowl, it wasn't a great season. And um, you know, uh, the Grambling game, take your hats off to them. They played well and they got a great defense. But we turned the ball over seven times and. Uh, we still had a chance to win. Uh, we're losing by seven and uh, with two minutes and, and turn it over again. So um, not taking anything away from them, but, you know, we just felt, you know, you can't beat anybody turning the ball over seven times. And we had, we still had an opportunity to win that game. And so we kind of felt we let that get away. And then the fam U game at home, we got a 16 point lead in the third quarter. Again, we weren't able to finish. We wound up losing that game by four, uh, not taking anything away from them. Uh, they kept playing and they finished the game and that's what we didn't do. And then, of course, Jackson, we didn't show up homecoming against Jackson and uh, probably the biggest game of the year. And uh, so we're looking forward to, uh, you know, playing all three of them again next year or this year coming up. And uh, and we want to finish strong. We, we didn't finish and we want to be able to finish this year. Speak to the defense and, and, and some of the guys uh, specifically that you're expecting to step up for you this year. Well. I, t I tell you this, Donald, like I told everybody in the media today, I'm going to have 11 new starters on defense. So I expect all of them to step up. I step all of them to play well. All of them are transfers. And um, uh, so I, I'm not going to talk about one or two of them because I want all, I think all 11 of them are going to have to step up. That's why I signed them, for them to come in and play and play at a high level. And so now they need to do their job. Do you expect a lot of guys – that you signed from your recruit that, that uh, you signed uh, from your recruiting class to make an immediate impact. Who who made some of those guys be less maybe the defensive side of the football? 
Well, offensive side, we only we signed a couple linemen, a couple receivers. Uh, but those receivers are gonna probably be down the line. They probably will have to play, but uh not immediate big impact players. Uh we signed a couple running backs, of course, they're gonna be behind Gary. And we signed uh a freshman quarterback from California, dual threat guy. They has to learn the system and 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 uh get his feet wet and things of that nature. So he's probably still a year away, maybe two. And um uh, uh and then uh, defensively, like I say, we, we signed all those guys and we expect all those guys to uh, uh, play and play well, Donald. And, and, and Donald, the reason I do that is because if I name two of them, then I got nine of them that's mad. <laughs> I got you. No, no, no. I get it. I, 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 I that's, that's why I, I, when you said you, you know, some of the guys that had signed, I was like, we won't even worry about the defense. I, I get that. I mean, I, I understand exactly what you're saying with that. Um, Swag football, how has it grown? You're, you, you know, five years now for you. How have you seen it grow? Grow. Grow. It was grown, uh, you know, with the addition to, of uh, the Florida schools, Bethune and FAM, uh, not only two great programs, two, two great coaches. Uh, Coach Sanders came into the league and uh, revamped the Jackson program, which was, you know, I always said Jackson, you know, before Coach got there, you know, we had three tough games against them or we had two tough games against them. And uh, and since he's been there, we we won and won. And uh, he just brought a whole new dynamic to uh, HBCU football in the SWAC. And uh, it's great for it's great for HBCU. It's great for the SWAC and it's great for college football. You know, for you, um, I, I want to you were a great college football player. I mean, not not just a great college football player. And what you were a great college football player with two different teams uh, in the with Winston-Salem State and the CIAA in North Carolina A&T uh, in the MEAC. Both times you played for uh, Bill Hayes. Um, he I, we had had the field named after him. I, I believe that was last year. And then, of course, was in the elected to the North Carolina Sports Hall of Fame going back um, a couple of years ago. Talk about what he means uh, to you and maybe how some of his coaching has has rubbed off on you and you kind of pass that on or some of your coaching philosophies you have in terms of your program and your players. Well, you know, Bill, Bill has really been like a father to me. Uh, Bill came to E. Smith my senior year right before the in the summer and all he had was a half a scholarship. And uh, he offered me a half a scholarship and I, and I accepted it and I went on to play for him and uh, game three, he came in, we had an open week. He came in, he called me in his office and said, Hey, I'm thinking about starting you this week. what you think? I was like, Oh yeah, let's go. I'm ready. <laughs> and so he was like, that's, that's what I needed. I just needed you to say you was ready. I believe in you, but we had 11 coaches. So they voted and we, five coaches voted for Bobby Jr. Five co coaches voted for Kenny Jones. And I had one vote and that was Bill Hayes. So uh, long story short, he started me and the rest was history. It went eight and one that year. We won the CIAA championship and we lost in the playoffs to Troy State, uh, who now D1, of course. And I play him again this year. But Bill, Bill, uh, you know, I, I'm a lawyer guy, and I, I got it from Bill. Bill was lawyer to me. He, he gave me half a scholarship. Uh, he trusted me and made me the starter over all 10 of his coaches. And so when he decided to go to a and it wasn't no decision for me. I'm, I'm going with the man that went with me. Why am I going to stay with y'all 10 that didn't want me to start? And this one guy did. He gave me half a scholarship. That's a no-brainer, man. So I was going with Bill, and uh, he taught me that, you know, and um, – uh, his his discipline, his toughness, uh, his tough love that he taught, that's what I try to do to every, every last one of my players. And uh, I got it from him. And I think that's a, probably the, the main reason why I've been successful because I do a lot of things he did. You know, he was a straight shooter, didn't take anything, and I'm, I'm the same way. And uh, we, we treat everybody the same. And uh, he's just been a great, a great man of not only – a great coach, but he was a great father figure and a, and a great husband that I saw also growing up. And, uh, you know, I, now I've been married 27 short years. So uh, he, he's just been everything you want in, in a man and a coach and a father and a leader. 
Well said. A C- couple of more thoughts. Uh, a quill, where's a quill, is a quill in anybody? Where's a quill now? Is he in anybody's camp currently? He's not in anybody's camp right now. He's trying to get in Detroit camp. Okay. So it's a possibility we keep our fingers crossed that he can get in Detroit camp. He did work out for the XFL last week. So they're going to have their draft and stuff coming up. Um, so if he don't get to Detroit, hopefully he get drafted by XFL team and have an opportunity to play there. I mean, he could have played. Yeah. He could have played in the USFL uh, this spring, uh, but the quarterback rules are: if you play, you got to you get you got to play two years because of the new leagues, and uh, they don't want the quarterback jumping ship. And so, a couple teams wanted him, but it was only three games left. You have to go in and learn the system. Next thing you know, he might not play. He might play one game, and then that'll ruin his chances for the next two years to get to the league. So, he decided not to do that. I mean, is there, you know, when you, you came out, right. When you came out, I mean, I, I believe you had a try, was it with the Cowboys? I, I think, right. When you, was that, am I right about that? Or you had no, an opportunity I, I, to play? No, I went, I went to uh, Canada. Okay. I went to Canada. I never got a chance to play with an NFL team. I, uh, the Eagles was recruiting Eagles. me hard, right. but uh, that's when Buddy Ryan was the head coach and Ron Jaworski was the scout. And uh, of course, in between that spring and the fall, uh, Ron, I mean, uh, Buddy Ron got fired, so Eagles didn't come back. And, and Randall Cunningham was starting quarterback, so <laughs> I had opportunity. I had opportunity. Yeah, but, but I mean, Glass should be – I mean, he should be on somebody – he should at the very – I'm just saying. I mean, I, I want to get your – I mean, shouldn't he be uh, at the very least in somebody's camp, uh, perhaps fighting for a, a position uh, as quarterback uh, on somebody's team in the National Football League? Well, uh, Donald, I, I definitely think he should. And uh, all he needs is opportunity. You know, uh, we're not saying he needs to be the starter, but give him an opportunity to compete against these other guys. Uh, he, he, he put his numbers against his num- His numbers are better than those guys, you know. And uh, at the end of the day, um, even the good teams we played, he still put up numbers, you know. And, uh, you know, Tom Brady didn't start in Michigan, did he? True. He got, he got opportunity. Right. Okay. He he wasn't even a starter. This guy threw for ten thousand yards, and he's not even gonna get an opportunity. So it is what it is, and uh, we just keep our fingers crossed and hope somebody give him a shot and uh, give him an opportunity to prove that he can play at that at, at that level. Yeah, anybody- because right now, because right now, Donald, sorry to cut you off, but right now, uh, I hate to say it, but HBCU wise, you know, you have to prove that you can play or you des- deserve to play in the league. And when you come from a power five, you have to prove that you can't play in the league. Mm. See, you get the opportunity to prove that you can't when you power five. But when you're HBCU, smaller schools, you have to prove that you can. So that's kind of where we are right now. And hopefully if anybody knows, it'll be Brad Holmes, the general manager uh, of the of the uh, Lions, who, of course, went and graduated, played ball and graduated uh, from a and I appreciate the time. Last thought, the schedule, you open up. Uh, Thursday night at UAB, then the next week at Troy. Just kind of talk about uh, the schedule. The three of your first four games uh, are, are on the road. Yeah, they are. And they're tough games. Um, and, uh, you know, we got to play the money games. You got to play a money game and uh, HBCUs. And so we're playing UAB and Troy. Um, you know, and we, what we want to do is we want to be competitive as long as we can and try to stay healthy and get out of those games without getting anybody hurt and uh, get on to our schedule. Of course, Austin P is a uh, uh, FCS uh, regular playoff team. So we want to show uh, the FCS committee that uh, HBCO, HBCUs and SWAC teams can play with the teams that go to the playoffs every year. So that'd be a great opportunity for us and our conference to show uh, that we, we deserve an at-large bid if we have good enough teams. And then, of course, game four, we open up with FAMU. And so that's going to be a big one. First conference game on the road. It's hard to win at FAM Stadium. Uh, Coach Simmons doing a great job with those guys. And that's going to be a true, true, true test uh, right there, the first game of the season. Last thought. I said last thought, but I promise you this is. I mean, I'd be remiss for those that may not know. uh, You played in the movie Any Given Sunday that starred Jamie Foxx. I always got to ask you about this. I think it's the coolest thing, you know, not only to have played his actual – uh, extra or you know playing uh, stunt, double, double. stunt there you go uh, see you know all the see you you're a movie star you know all the terms and all that right um, yeah. but 
Yeah, but I mean, but to be able to, you know, converse and meet Al Pacino and, and Dennis Quaid and all of those, you know, great actors, man, that must have been an absolutely great time. It was. Uh, don't forget Jim Brown and Lawrence Taylor, uh, Ricky Waters, uh, Cameron Diaz, you know, uh, LL Cool J, uh, Bill Bellamy. All those guys was in there and all of them was down to earth. And it was just a great, great opportunity for me to meet those guys and and uh, just just break bread with those guys and have dialogue with those guys. And Al Pacino would come out uh, probably once a week and his jacket, his sports jacket and slacks and grab a football and we'll stand 10 yards apart and we'll toss the ball for about five minutes. And uh, it, it was just great, man. It was it was really great. And uh, I was really blessed to be able to do it. And um, it's a it's a great lifetime memory. You got any 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 roles during the offseason coming up anytime soon? <laughs> No, no. <laughs> the old arm is old arm is retired. Well, no, wait a minute. Now, weren't you weren't you doing some battle with somebody with like a quill and those guys and in oh, practice oh, yeah. more recently? I, I still beat them every year. <laughs> I still beat them every year. <laughs> well, the arm is okay, hey, man. Hey, hey, Donald, this is honest to God truth. This uh -huh. is the truth. A quill glass was with me for four years, and we had a quarterback challenge every Friday for four years. A quill glass with Abdul Ibrahim as his wide receiver. Not every week, but a lot of weeks. A quill glass got one victory. <laughs> wow. Is that right? That's right. So maybe I need to go get a trial. <laughs> you need to get the trial that you should have gotten all those yeah. years ago with the Eagles, That's man. Right. That's right. <laughs> you know what I mean? All yeah. right. Well, Alabama AM opens the season on Thursday, September 1st on the road at UAB again in his fifth season as the head football coach at Alabama and m is Connell Maynard gracious enough to join us here on the HBCU football daily podcast coach Maynard appreciate the time we look forward to watching you and the Bulldogs this season thanks thanks for having me we hope you enjoyed this episode of the HBCU football daily podcast you can also listen to the podcast at box iHeartMedia, iHeart Media or wherever you get your podcasts don't forget to get your HBCU football fix on box to row with Donald Ware each weekend on the radio station near you and on Sirius XM on HBCU channel 142 and on ESPNU radio on Sirius XM channel 84 follow us on Twitter and Instagram at at Box to Row for the latest in HBCU football and don't forget to tell a friend.